Okay, so now my outside edges are all working up here. I've just got to clean up down here. So we continue that. Just to show you how you can do it by hand, I'm using the eraser. And I have on my move tool, I have auto select layer as my setting for my move tool. So when I'm on my eraser, I just hit command and that will change my cursor to my move tool. So I can just immediately select the layer that I click. So in this instance, that's very helpful. Helps me soften and delete the layers I need. And as it reveals something underneath behind, I can then click, click on that layer and delete that. Now, right now I'm using about an 80% hardness brush that's pressure sensitive for size. And again, as you see something behind that it reveals, you can decide to use what it reveals, or you can decide to select that layer and delete away from it, erase away from it. But I definitely want to get rid of any of this content, this background stuff, these pixels that I don't want in my final. And I don't really want this hair behind the legs, so I'm going to select that and just erase that out. But I might want it overlapping the tail a little bit still. This stuff can be handy. So you use the overlapped textures where they're useful to you, for sure. And it's all about getting the silhouette you want kind of cleaned up, helping it make sense. Now I want to start thinking about transitioning these different internal textures together. As soon as I get the silhouette, I'll be working at that. So I'm cutting off the little toes of the squirrel feet. There we go. I can use the talons that I've already designed. Okay, now everything is still in different layers. So how do I make sure I've cleaned up all the silhouette? You can't really until this next step. So now I know my creature. If I'm going to bring in one last element, I'm going to bring it in now. So I'll bring in that part for the tail. Because even though we're submitting our work today, we pay attention to the deadlines. We still want to push ourselves creatively, do interesting, make interesting decisions. If we have an idea that we just want to pursue, we should pursue it. So I can clean up that tail, the outside of it quickly, using the um, magic wand, and then refining the edge. Whoops, and deleting from it. Come on. There we go. Biting away from it. That will help it look a little bit nicer. And then transforming it. I think flipping it. Mm 
Yeah, that's that's what I want. Thinking of the silhouette, right? Don't want any of this. Erase all that. And then start blending it in. So what are the keys to blending things? Soft edge, 100% opacity to get rid of the, the outside debris. 0% hardness to get rid of hard edges where you don't want them, like where it blends with the tail. Playing with your levels adjustment. I'm going to limit the highlights on the flower. I'm going to darken its midtones. I'm going to play with its saturation, its color balance. even its hue a little bit. Let's darken its shadows. It's almost all shadow. So maybe burn it in the right places. Not burn its highlights though. Burn its midtones. Yeah, it's all very strong. And color balance, that will help a lot. So that red was pretty powerful. And then color balance for the shadows. Let's get some of the blues in there and the greens. And then, and then I can burn, or I think the overlap should be And I can dodge where I think the highlight should be. Going to match the general lighting. Especially as it transitions in and then Let's take a lower opacity eraser and start blending it in. And that lets some of that fur texture come through as well. So we can still do some pretty major changes to our design. I might even just go to levels and just darken the whole thing. <laughs> Limit the highlights a little bit and then just burn the tail down. Just do the levels of the tail, push those darker limit the highlights. So it kind of sits back a little. All right, save. Okay, so now, how do I do the final cleanup of all the edges before I do final internal transitions? First, I can save a lot of memory by cropping it. We're in the end stages here. I want to leave a little bit of space on each edge and make sure not to lose any, crop anything off, but I don't need all that extra gray space. Okay, now I am going to take my gray background layer. I'm going to duplicate it. And this time I'm going to fill that duplicate, edit fill with 100% black instead of gray. And that will show anything that's lighter than <laughs> black. So you see all these little pieces of noise and debris? We will all have them. Right? The problem is they're on 
a huge variety of layers. So how do I erase them once and for all? Turn off your background layers, turn off your sketch, go to your very top layer, hold down Option and say Layer Merge Visible. Hold down Option and then turn off the layers underneath and the groups underneath and turn back on your background, the background black, and that background gray. Now, because you held down option, now your whole creature is in one, one layer. We just need to clean up its outside. So how can we do that? We take the magic wand, we have contiguous turned on, we click on the empty space on the outside, and it shows us all the areas that need to be cleaned up. So I select all of them. Remember, Photoshop's really good at selecting empty space. And then I go to ref select and mask, and I let it bite away at them by a few pixels. And you see now, with that refine, you see how it's just my creature that's selected. It's most of the debris is no longer there. Let me make sure that this is in there. So we're getting a really strong cutout now. Get all that little noise and debris out. Do it one more time to get that row. Okay, up oh, and then there's this one. Add that in. It's like going through a final buffer. And then I just hit delete. And now there is no debris <coughs> around it. And if I want to be extra sure, I can make another duplicate of the background and then fill that with white. And that's how it will print. And it will show the creature all cleaned up. So now that I've done that, I can work on some internal edges, internal transitions. Now, how do I do that? So I'm going to take my combined layer here at the top. I'm going to turn off all my background layers. So you just see the grid behind, because I don't want to accidentally select from that. And I'm going to make a new blank layer on top of everything. And I'm going to call this clone stamp layer. I don't like to clone stamp within actual layers. I always like to do it on top and you'll see why. So a clone stamp layer is kind of my finishing texture overlay layer within my creature. And then what I do with that layer, I'm going to right click around the eyeball and label it red because this is a special effect layer. I'm going to use for the first time this clone stamp tool. And this, maybe I used it a little bit with texture overlay, but with this clone stamp tool, I can paint with pixels from another part of the image. And I want to have it be all layers that it's sampling from. And the first thing I'm going to do is move this shoulder up. So I'm going to make my clone stamp brush pretty large, pressure sensitive to size still, about 75% hardness, 100% opacity. Now here's the trick to using clone stamp that takes a little practice. You have to hold down option and target what you want to copy. So you hold down option and click and it targets it and then I can move that shoulder up and paint it in right here. It's replacing the pixels. Now it's very important. I am not doing this on my actual layer. I'm doing it on top of it. And that allows me to blend it in. Right? So it's getting very copy-pasty in some places. But that shoulder now works better for me. So how do I blend it in? I take my eraser. I have kind of a low opacity soft edge. And I start blending. Just lightly bringing those textures together. So there's a little bit of feather. There's a little